Hello, welcome to another episode of the Amateur Machine Shop. I really appreciate all those who have chosen to subscribe and watch my content. In this third video, I will cover the machining of the connecting rod, a part I've been looking forward to making as there was a process of milling the outside amateurs that I really wanted to try. The connecting rod is rather simple. Two holes on either end and some basic milling. The rod is less than two inches in length and a thin part at one eighth of an inch. I start the process by a quarter inch thick brass stock to near overall size required. I really need to add a guard to the long exposed blade. Before I start milling and drilling, the holes in the outside periphery need to be scribed for reference. I didn't have a small center punch, so I ground the shank of a broken quarter inch tap to a sharp point and used it to punch the centers for each hole. For scribing, the points of the calipers are being used in the initial layout followed by dividers. The dividers didn't work so well, as this set doesn't lock. The one face on the brass stock is flat, so I need to mill the opposite face flat. This will allow the part to be held in the vise securely. The parallel I'll use to locate the brass height is of the same thickness, so a thin rod is placed against the brass to allow the vise jaw to clamp the brass and not the parallel. The 8mm hole is for a small bearing. I debated if the hole should be bored or reamed, but I have neither of these tools available at home. A drill bit generally cuts a little oversized at the start and as it feeds down, cuts closer to the normal size of the drill. After the hole is drilled through, I check the fit of the bearing and it drops in a little and snugs up against the bore as it's pressed down. Perfect. Here's the process I alluded to at the beginning. I saw this operation performed in a video on YouTube in another engine building channel. 
There are a few risks with this setup. If the part gets loose, the end mill will grab and pull the part until either the end mill snaps or the material is milled away. I placed a stop in the vise should the material get away from me. Using the same 8mm drill bit that I used to drill the hole as the pivot shaft, feeding the end mill a little at a time and rotating the part about 90 degrees. I then back off the end mill and flip the part and continue to mill the remaining half. I goofed a little right at this point. I turned the Y hand crank on the mill the wrong way, gouging the brass a little. Using the same procedure as the large end, the smaller end on the connecting rod was rounded. Using the same 2mm drill bit that I drilled with, but the hole is a little larger, so not achieving a nice finish due to the connecting rod having too much play. At this point I notice I inscribed lines tangent to the large end of the connecting rod when the drawing is actually showing the taper is much smaller. Once again I set up the 8mm drill bit and whittled away at the larger end. This time making deeper cuts on the shank area of the rod. The gouge that I made earlier was also removed. Since I had little experience now with this procedure, I didn't use a vice grip to hold the part. The end mill tends to push away the material so I can hold it with my hand. This time for the smaller end I used a pin gauge to get a tight fit for the 2mm hole. The pin is a few thousandths of an inch larger, it made a difference as the rod wasn't wiggling on the pin and provided a better surface finish when milling the radius on the rod end.
spent some time hand filing the rod flat areas. Filing is a slow process and I haven't spent the time over the years to really master it. Holding the file one way or another to best remove the material and still maintain the part accuracy is a learned process. The material I used was quarter inch thick and now I need to bring it down to 1 8 thick. Many machinists are using super glue to work hold odd parts. I thought I would give it a try as well. Off camera I set up a piece of scrap aluminum and milled it flat. I will glue the part to the machine surface. I am using Permatex super glue as that was all the local supplier had. I tried the cheap original super glue brand a while back on another project but it just doesn't have the bond strength. Not sure what I did wrong, let's try that again. I may have been a little too aggressive with the cut depth. On the second attempt, the milling worked much better. The glue held until the part was the correct thickness. The easiest way to break the super glue bond is to apply some heat. Using my small propane torch to heat up the brass is enough to break the bond. The very last operation needed is to mill the flat areas that blend into the reed eye on both sides of the large end of the connecting rod. Use the scribe lines as a reference. Some final filing to remove the milling burrs and the part is finished for now. At a future point I plan on spending the time to true up the edges and the symmetry along with applying a polish on the brass.
I appreciate all those who have chosen to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.